just when you think the Liberal Party could not melt down any further, they surprise us. Uh, this could be either a very long or a very short summer for Finance Minister Christopher Freeland. A bombshell report dropped today detailing tension between Christia Freeland and Justin Trudeau and speculation that he wanted to replace her with Carney. We cross-check five different sources to bring you the facts and reveal why Christia Freeland may not last through the end of summer. Let's take a look. So we begin with a Globe and Mail article, which you'll be hearing about a few times as uh, we go through this video. And the headline says, tension rises between Freeland PMO over economic messaging, low approval ratings. Gotta blame them on someone, right? Senior officials in Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's office are concerned that Finance Minister Chrystia Freeland has not been effective in delivering an upbeat economic message as the Liberal government struggles to reconnect with Canadians amid low approval ratings, sources say. The relationship between Ms. Freeland, who is also Deputy Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister's office has become tense. She has been the most powerful minister in the government since Mr. Trudeau promoted her to the finance portfolio in August of 2020 after the resignation of Bill Morneau. Under Mr. Trudeau, the PMO has centralized decision-making and holds a tight grip on government messaging from ministers, bureaucrats, and liberal MPs. There is always a healthy tension between finance and PMO, but the finger pointing comes after the Liberals lost the safe Toronto riding of St. Paul's in a by-election last month that was contested by Ms. Freeland's former chief of staff, Leslie Church. The loss prompted strong criticism from some Liberals for the Prime Minister to reconsider his future, shake up his cabinet, and set a new policy direction for the government. Although there are no indications the Prime Minister is planning imminently to shuffle Ms. Freeland to another portfolio, a government source said there were discussions internally about the possibility of recruiting former Bank of Canada Governor Mark Carney as Finance Minister. Two sources say the view of some senior officials within the PMO, including Chief of Staff Katie Telford, is that Ms. Freeland has been ineffective in selling the government's economic policies that have come under assault from Conservative leader Pierre Polyev. Other criticism includes that Ms. Freeland is not doing enough to win over members of the Liberal caucus, the sources say. The Globe and Mail is not naming the sources who were not authorized to discuss the matter. The Prime Minister's press secretary, Anne Clara Valancourt, said Mr. Trudeau has full trust in his finance minister. Quote, the Prime Minister and his office have full confidence in Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Christia Freeland, end quote, Ms. Valancourt said. Quote, the Deputy Prime Minister has been working tirelessly to serve Canadians since she was first appointed to Cabinet in 2015, end quote. Ms. Valancourt lauded Ms. Freeland as the first female fin uh, finance minister who introduced $10 a day daycare, dental care, and pharma care and made, quote, historic investments in housing and into building a stronger economy, end quote. Ms. Freeland's office was not available to comment. A Liberal Party source said there is also unease in the PMO over a controversial new tax on U.S. tech giants such as Netflix, Google, and Amazon. Ms. Freeland says the tax will bring in billions in new revenue, but some in the PMO are worried about the threat of U.S. countervailing duties. The Globe is not naming the source who is not authorized to discuss the internal debate over the sales tax. For nearly a year, Mr. Trudeau and the Liberal Party have trailed the Conservatives by a substantial margin, which continued after the Prime Minister and Ms. Freeland tabled a budget in April designed to win over Canadians with a big-ticket housing program for Millennials and Generation Z voters. After the by-election loss last month, however, some Liberal Party members and MPs have called for change, including a cabinet shuffle to rejuvenate the government's agenda. According to one source, the PMO did discuss a scenario, first reported by the Toronto Star, to replace Ms. Freeland with Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of Canada and Bank of England. 
In that scenario, Ms. Freeland would have been offered the foreign affairs portfolio she held before becoming finance minister. Both sources say Ms. Telford in private conversations had high praise for Ms. Freeland as foreign affairs minister when she renegotiated the trilateral free trade agreement with Mexico and the United States when Donald Trump was president. Mr. Carney, considered a leadership contender should Mr. Trudeau step down, has said the April budget, which proposed $52.9 billion in new spending, did not put an adequate focus on fostering economic growth. In indirect criticism of Ms. Freeland's financial stewardship, Mr. Carney warned of the risks of quote-unquote constant spending and too much government subsidies, although he also congratulated the Liberals for their investments in housing and AI. So this is um, this is quite the article because these are reportedly sources from inside the prime minister's office and inside Freeland's office, right? So um, uh, this is not looking too good uh, between the uh, relationship between uh, Freeland and Trudeau. Um, can you, can, is there any wonder, like, Trudeau, have you been watching our videos of Freeland over the last year and a half? Every time she's in front of a microphone, she's a dumpster fire. Well, and I'm sitting here kind of wondering if Mark Carney does replace her, if he will do a better job because he knows what he's doing, or if it's going to be even more disastrous because he knows what he's doing and has, has an agenda to carry out or will carry out an agenda for the prime minister, perhaps. So... On this article, we have uh, another clip from somebody who's on Parliament Hill. Uh, some of you like her, some of you don't, but she's a MP on the Hill regardless, Michelle Rempel Garner. And uh, we're going to get her take on, on the leaks and how serious this potentially is. Just when you think the Liberal Party could not melt down any further, they surprise us. Today, breaking news out of Ottawa shows a Liberal Party in extreme disarray. And today, uh, once again, it's Justin Trudeau's fault. So there's a few things that I want to break down for you on what has happened today. It has been an incredibly busy news day. And it all has to do with Justin Trudeau, his crazy PMO, his crazy policies, as well as some of the backstabbing and, and crazy things that are happening within his caucus. So there's, there's big stories happening. Everybody in Canada woke up to this article. Um, it's written by um, very well-known and well-respected reporter Robert Fife. Tension rises between Freeland PMO over economic messaging, low approval ratings. And guys, this article is something else. In it, Justin Trudeau, an anonymous source, which of, of course it's somebody from Justin Trudeau's PMO. There's nobody that would go to Bob Fife with this type of knowledge if it wasn't an approved leak. So just to be very clear, right? Somebody went and, ba and threw Christia Freeland under the bus, basically blamed her, said, well, you know, Justin Trudeau is looking to replace her with Mark Carney, carbon tax Mark Carney, um, because it's her communications fault that the, that the polling is so low. It's, it's because she can't communicate. That's, that's why the liberals are doing so badly. So like Freeland or not, have you seen this movie before? I sure have. What does Justin Trudeau do every time he gets in trouble? He does what? He throws one of his female cabinet ministers under the bus. You know, that's exactly what I said to Ryan while we were driving home today. Yeah. I, I said, we've seen this before. This has happened before. The way Trudeau treats his women, it's not good. And what I said is, it's the way he treats everybody. <laughs> so, uh, and if you've ever seen the sci-fi series Battlestar Galactica, you'll recognize this, uh, this saying, all this has happened before and all of this will happen again. Um, so, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that shortly. Um, in the meantime, we're going to now jump to a press conference that Trudeau was having uh, while speaking at NATO and... Um, you know, this, this question came up. So let's take a look. Next question. Adrian Morrow with the Globe and Mail. Prime Minister, did you and your staff discuss the possibility of replacing Christia Freeland as finance minister with Mark Carney? And did you raise uh, the, this issue with Mr. Carney personally? En français aussi. 
I have been talking with Mark Carney for years now about getting him to join federal politics. I think he would be uh, an outstanding addition at a time when uh, Canadians need good people to step up in politics. Um, in regards to Christia, she has been a close friend and ally and partner in doing really big things for Canada and will continue to be delivering the largest housing and most ambitious housing program in Canada's history, delivering on child care, transforming our economy to be ready for the 21st century. These are all things that Christia has led on and will continue to. I have full confidence uh, in her abilities and on the work we're going to be doing together. Okay, remember that. I have full confidence in her abilities. That's very, very important. Um, because we're going to address that in a bit. Um, but interesting, interesting that how the criticism allegedly from the PMO is that Christopher Freeland can't communicate. You know, where, where, where Freeland pauses, Trudeau has his uhs in. And um, notice what was absent from that. He didn't say, oh, once. Yeah, so that was obviously a prepared statement. And I mean, he didn't confirm or deny anything either. Well, and you may ask, well, how could this be a prepared statement unless he anticipated that this question was going to be coming either today or, or you know, in, in, a, in a press conference that was going to come soon? Well, we're going to go back to something Michelle Rumble Garner said again in a minute. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But all this ties together. But in the meantime, now we're going to head over to CTV and see what they have to say. Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland, also the Finance Minister, is one of the highest profile members of Team Trudeau. She routinely travels the country giving news conferences and trying to hype the government's record, especially nowadays amid very polling numbers. But today, a report from the Globe and Mail that her future could be in doubt, that Trudeau advisors are apparently questioning her abilities as an effective communicator. And the newspaper also saying the relationship between her office and Justin Trudeau's office has become tense, leading to speculation about the possibility of Mark Carney, former Bank of Canada governor, jumping into politics. Who knows? Let's bring in our national correspondent, Rachel Aiello, who's standing by in Ottawa, following and listening in at the keyholes of different doors. I'm kidding. But bring us up to speed here on what this means here and what it doesn't mean. And, and this ongoing discussion about Mark Carney being this savior to come in and and help save the Liberal Party from political oblivion. Yeah, lots of really interesting big names being thrown around today by the Prime Minister, hitting right on this speculation that we've been covering for months about both the state of the Liberal Party under Justin Trudeau, potential successors to him, Mark Carney, clearly Todd, being one of the names that keeps getting bandied about. He keeps throwing cold water on it. So today, kind of to bring viewers back to how we got here, there has been pressure on the Prime Minister since that ill-fated by-election late last month to do something to shake things up, turn their fortunes around. And if he's going to stay as Prime Minister, the speculation, Todd, has shifted to what he needs to do within his inner circle, within his front bench of cabinet ministers, to try to show worried Liberals that they can turn things around. So this has prompted some reporting, including from our colleagues at the Globe and Mail and the Toronto Star, that Christopher Freeland's position as finance minister could be on the table, suggesting there that he could be looking to bring in Mark Carney, that highly talked about potential successor to him, to fill that role. So the prime minister was asked about this today. He continues to say, Todd, he has full confidence in Christopher Freeland, and they're going to continue to work together, but did note pretty interestingly that he's been talking to Carney for years. There it is again. There it is again. Full confidence. Full confidence in Christia Freeland's abilities. Not as finance ministry, doesn't go that far as to specify. But full confidence in her abilities. Maybe as a cabinet minister, he means. Maybe as an MP, he means. Maybe, maybe as deputy prime minister, he means. Maybe as his janitor. Um, <laughs> who knows? Um, but, um, but there's a possibility that she may even resign. Um, and not because she's been asked to, but... In a way, in a way, she's almost being constructively dismissed. So let's take a look at one more article, and this is by the National Post. 
On Parliament Hill, on social media, and in private messages and political chat rooms, many highlighted the uncanny resemblance between that headline and Article to One by the same reporter published nearly four years ago in August 2020. Quote, Finance Minister Bill Morneau's job could be in jeopardy after clashes with Prime Minister, sources say, end quote. That story created a ripple effect, leading to Morneau's resignation just days later as finance minister and liberal MP. Quote, The leaks and planted stories have poisoned the atmosphere to the point where there were few, if any, alternatives available beyond submitting my resignation, end quote. Morneau wrote in his 2023 book, Where To From Here? In an interview, Morneau's former Deputy Chief of Staff, Sharon Cower, said that what she saw in the article Thursday morning was the beginning of the same quote-unquote playbook that led to her ex-boss's frustrated resignation four years ago. Quote, this is exactly what happened before. It's just very unprofessional, end quote, she said. Quote, the real issue is that the PM is pulling at an all-time low, his popularity is low, end quote, and he isn't changing things, quote, top to bottom, end quote, at the Prime Minister's office, she added. The question is whether the Prime Minister's inner circle is moving against Freeland the way it did against Morneau. While the anonymous criticisms flowed in early August of 2020, Trudeau was vacationing with his family in Georgian Bay, Ontario. Cower says the leak so piqued Morneau that he contacted the Prime Minister's office demanding to speak with Trudeau and the two eventually spoke on the phone. Cower said Morneau told Trudeau that the leaks were quote-unquote unacceptable and demanded the PM quote-unquote get his house in order. Quote, he, Trudeau, replied that he was not aware of the leaks and he had no idea where they had come from, end quote. Morneau wrote incredulously in his book, quote, he had always been respectful toward me, so I was pretty sure this was not a malevolent attempt to exit his most senior minister, but a question of his control over the PMO, end quote. Shortly after that conversation, the PMO published an extraordinary statement of support on August 11th saying Trudeau had, quote unquote, full confidence, end quote, in his finance minister. But that didn't stop the leaks and media stories detailing the strife between the PMO and the finance minister. Cower said Morneau decided a few days later that he would resign because the situation, quote unquote, wasn't sustainable and scheduled a meeting with Trudeau on August 17th. Sounds familiar. So you have almost the exact situation happening. And if you look at some of the different players that have come and gone from Trudeau's inner circle, uh, this seems to be the playbook. And I want to go back to one specific thing that Michelle Rempel Garner said. She said that this had to be an approved leak. Which, of, of course, it's somebody from Justin Trudeau's PMO. There's nobody that would go to Bob Fife with this type of knowledge if it wasn't an approved leak. Meaning that the person who leaked this from the Prime Minister's office was told to do so. Was told to do so by Justin Trudeau. Interesting. So, do we have a theory as to why? Yes. Um, I think what he's trying to do is put distance and create a narrative that the problem isn't Trudeau. The problem isn't the liberal platform. The problem isn't the cabinet. The problem is Christian Freeland. Well, and I think it's going to work at least in part, because Canadians already dislike Christia Freeland. Well, he's just he's just throwing her, you know, as a lamb to the slaughter at this point. The the problem is, is he seems to think that once he once he gives them the sacrificial lamb, that the uh, the hungry animals will be satisfied and will just go away. But he's completely underestimating Canadians. What will happen is that Canadians will become even more ravenous saying, great, one of you is down. Who's now we got to get the rest of you Yeah, out. who can we sink our jaws into next? So that's... Metaphorically, of course. <laughs> that's what I think is going to happen. And it, and if I'm Mark Carney, and if, if Mark Carney is very smart, 
And these are just our opinions, okay? Uh, we haven't read these anywhere. These, these are ours. Um, if I'm Carney, I'm going to be playing Trudeau like a fiddle here. Well, because I think it sounds like Carney's ultimate goal is to get Trudeau's job right. eventually. He doesn't want to be so, finance minister. No. He so, wants to be the top dog. So what happens? Okay, let's just play this out. What happens if Trudeau's talking to Carney? says, oh, yeah, come in as finance minister. And, and Carney says, oh, sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, but you, you, have to, you have to get rid of Freeland first for me to do that. Oh, okay, yeah, I have a playbook on that. Don't worry about that. So, well, uh, well, I mean, to be fair, if Carney does come into government, into cabinet, finance minister would seem like the best position for him, considering he's been the governor of the Bank of Canada and the Bank of England. Just from a resume perspective, sure. Of course. But I don't think Carney has any intention of joining this government before the next election. But if I'm Carney, I'm telling Trudeau that I do. Because let's see this play out. So... Um, Carney uh, doesn't really care what happens to the current Liberal government. It's on fire. The brand is dead. If he's an intelligent guy, he already knows this. So if, if, if I were him, what I'd be telling Trudeau is, oh yeah, well, you know, got, got to get rid of Freeland. Okay, sure. So Trudeau executes, you know, more no plan 2.0 and starts authorizing all these leaks, creating all of this, you know, additional bad press over Freeland. Freeland gets frustrated, ends up resigning and saying, okay, uh, Carney, you can, you can take her riding. And Carney says, ah, actually, I'm busy. Sorry. Now Trudeau is in a big pickle. Well, and the other thing that causes problems for Trudeau, and this he created himself all the way back in 2015, is that he wanted his cabinet to be 50% female. So if they get rid of Freeland and bring Carney in, they need another female from somewhere else in the caucus. And they also need to get rid of a man from the, the cabinet because it, it won't be 50-50 anymore. Well, but here's the thing, like Carney could, could say, oh, I can't believe Justin Trudeau did this to another woman like he, he could yeah. like literally go he could on. vilify it yes he could yes absolutely he, he absolutely could and then what that what would that do that would that would make the liberals ravenous about getting rid of justin trudeau at that point and it isolates justin trudeau and puts them all alone um and then at that point there may be no choice but to have an election the liberals fall and then they're looking for new leadership in comes Mr. Carney to start rebuilding from the ashes, builds a new brand, and then off he goes. And is potentially already the leader of the opposition. Could be. Yeah, if he if he does run in the upcoming election, if Carney runs in the upcoming election, whenever it is, uh, he could he could take over as leader and then become the leader of the official opposition. Because there's, there's if the Liberals have that many seats. <laughs> yeah, if they have that many seats. The block might be opposition at this point. Again, it's a race to the bottom but, right. for them in the NDP. Um, so that is that's like um, the uh, the evil genius conspiracy theory uh, for Mark Carney. Let's say he decides that he's going to come in and he's which would not be smart because he doesn't want to go down with the Titanic. He wants to show up. On, uh, on on the rescue ships pulling the survivors up. That's where he wants to be. But anyway, let's say he wants to go down with the Titanic. So there's a couple of different ways Carney could get in, as we've discussed before. Number one, um, Trudeau's Morneau 2.0 plan is successful, pushes Freeland out, and then Mark Carney runs in a relatively safe, maybe, don't know, relatively safe uh, riding of Rosedale which is where Freeland is. I believe that's her writing. Um, yeah, University Rosedale. Yeah, that's right. And um, so by-election happens, um, then he can get in. Now, the catch is, is they have to actually make this happen within, I think it's the next six months. Yes, because if an election, or sorry, I should phrase it this way. If a seat becomes vacant within nine months of the next scheduled general election, they don't hold that by-election. They just wait until the general Right, so they have to have this kind of done by, what is it, January, January 20th. Yeah. January 20th. Um, so they have to move relatively quickly if they want this to happen. Um, so that's, that's one possibility. The second possibility is um, 
is that they make Carney a senator, and then he could he could be in cabinet and hold a ministerial position. Um, but that doesn't really make sense for Carney because he, if his goal is to be the leader of the Liberal Party. You can't do that from the Senate. Yeah. I mean, you could be the, the liberal leader in the Senate, but they already have a liberal leader in the Senate. But then he would have to he, he would have to become a senator and then resign as a senator. And it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't. It, it really, 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 really doesn't. Especially, he needs support from all of the liberal caucus and all the liberal party members. Because, um, and are they going to take kindly to someone kind of stepping through and kind of cheating their way in. And I also don't think senators typically resign very often, usually only if they're Health quite reasons. ill. Yeah. Um, so it, it does not happen very often. So, um, so that's the, that's the, that's the theory here, folks. So it could be a really interesting, even couple of days or a couple of weeks to see what happens with Freeland because right before Mar Marno resigned, and during all of these leaks coming out, Justin Trudeau said, I have full confidence in my finance minister. Well, you know, there's another situation that uh, we didn't discuss yet, but the article touched on, which is that Freeland vacates her role as finance minister and in, becomes the minister of foreign affairs again instead. But that would displace the current minister of foreign affairs, which is Melanie Jolie. Yep. Now, I've heard Justin Trudeau likes to have her close by, so I doubt he would boot her from cabinet. And also, bringing in a man is going to displace your numbers, again, that 50% female ratio. So which man is he going to get rid of from cabinet? Well, he doesn't, he doesn't, have, to, he doesn't have to remove Freeland at all. She could just stay as deputy prime minister and that's it. Right? I know, but if you're offsetting that by bringing in another man, it's no longer 50-50. I agree. And, and so he and, has to remove a man somewhere. He can't just say, okay, Freeland, you're finance minister, or you're going from finance minister now to foreign affairs minister. And Jolie, who's the foreign affairs minister, has to go somewhere. Yep. So where is she going to go? She has to displace a man so that Mark Carney coming in maintains that 50-50 ratio. Well, not only that... If they're taking the path of making Mark Carney an MP, you 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 not only have to displace a man from cabinet, that guy has to resign as an MP. Yeah, that's right. So now you have to convince one of the men in cabinet to throw away their what three hundred thousand dollar a year salary plus bonuses or not bonuses benefits. but perks benefits. That's what they're called. So. Um, and it has to be in a very, very strong liberal riding because you can't have another upset like Toronto St. Paul's. So, so it's a big mess. It's 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 a it's a big mess. Um, and uh, meanwhile, the caucus isn't meeting, so you have all of these back channel discussions going on. Um, and honestly, the Liberal Party is just imploding at this point. Um, it's it's wonderful to see. But at the same time, we would like an election sooner or later. Well, so. and, and we don't want this happening to our country, to our government. No, I mean, because we want the world someone, sees this. Yeah, well, and we want a government that's focused on working for Canadians, not focused on whatever squabbles they've got going on in caucus. Yeah, infighting and political games and all of this stuff. So, um, so stay tuned, folks, because... Uh, this could be either a very long or a very short summer for finance minister Christopher Freeland.